Hey guys, Murloc68 here. Back again with the Abus 8145. By now you've seen the last video. Um, it was a five pinner. I tried something a little different. We discussed the key beforehand, gave you my thoughts. I went ahead and SPP'd it. Um, then I zipped it, raked it, and of course bumped it. Everything I used is right there. As promised, I'm bringing it back. Six pinner with some security pins and a different spring combination using the same flat key to see how it would fare with some changes other than the key so the five pin bidding was two two three two three it is now a two two three two three four with the last pin so we'll start off with the SPP and I mean anything should be better than the last time so we're going to start off there and then we're going to move on and see if we can get any of the other stuff that we got done the last time. So let's go. And then I will gut it and show you what I did. So here we go. Six pinner. It does not resemble the original stock version. Okay, five is binding. There's four. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that was six. Binding on five. Well, I think we've already gone longer, so that's a good sign. I honestly suspect we would be here a bit, so let's see what happens. It's definitely not talking at all. Four is binding. Okay, there was a click on four. I felt just the minimal, minimal movement there on the core. I'm keeping fairly heavy tension. You can see the color on my hand there, on my finger changing there. Three, four, five. I think I gotta get back there to get six. Can we use flat key like that? and make it into a somewhat formidable lock and clearly 
it's a much more different pick than it was the first time around and I can tell you I don't feel a lot there's not a lot of feedback going on okay now it's three binding start again here one two three Okay, we had a little bit of movement there on five. One. Tension's almost. Fairly consistent on the heavier side. I'm looking for that binder and I'm going to let off on that tension once I get there. Okay, there it is. As always, first attempt with a new pin setup and springs. I think it's pin. All right, let me um, let me bring in a deeper hook here. This is what we wanted, right? Sort of to dispel the myth that that flat key in all instances is pretty bad, but it does not appear to be the case right now. No feedback other than that slight movement earlier on and now I can't get any pin to react K3 maybe yeah, I've got a switch picks here it's something a little sturdier are cramping up surprisingly. It's a little early in the game for that. That was a nice click out of three. Okay, four. And I've got my first biggest movement there. So let's see what's going on here now. I'm gonna come back up top. One Switch picks again. Okay, pin four. Hmm. Just want to make sure I'm not binding. I might have to use this hook here.
K-pin 4. Okay, it's most definitely pin 4. And you'll, you'll see why if I get it. Counter rotation. Wow. Thought I had it, but My pick just keeps falling right off. to go with, go with this Peterson, it's got a flat tip on it, so I'm either going to break it or I'm going to, ah uh, well, I think I just, uh, yeah, uh, I think I lost the spot there. I think I need to first adjust my tensioner, <clears throat> so I don't want to lose my position. I'm going to use the longer end this time so I can raise it. Okay, I want to leave a little bit of a gap there. Let's see if I can... defeat my own creation here. Oh, you bastard. Thought I had it. Man, that's a false set. And there we go. Different lock, guys. Same key, different lock. I can tell you that much, and you're going to see uh, what I did. So what now, very quickly, we're going to go over is... We're going to attempt to zip it. There are ways around it, but I can tell you right now, it's highly unlikely because you're going to get caught on a spool. And what I mean by that is the zip will work until it goes into a false set and then you're locked, right? So 
but you never know, funnier things have happened. So let's give it a quick shot. Okay, just make an adjustment on that. And again, this is just to demonstrate. Okay, so there's the fault set, guys. I'm locked into this fault set. I can't really do much now. I could play around with it, but I'd have to dump the fault set to go back. So we'll give it one more try. And there's the fault set, and I'm pretty much done. Okay, Let's see if we can rake it. I suspect that the raking won't work, so we're going to incorporate a bit of rocking to get by those spools and some other magic. And there we go, I'm in the fault set again, jammed up. So the pins did do what they were supposed to do. Okay, we'll get a bit more effort to rock those pins in place. And that is a deep, deep fault set. Okay, that's as deep as we're going to go. We're locked in place there. And of course, I'll give the bumping an effort. Uh, we'll go back to... Uh, Covert medical challenge lock that I ended up bumping that one time. So anything is possible. And as you guys know, this is the first time I did not um, alter the key. I decided to stay with that flat bitted key just for that purpose. And so far, everything turned out well. So let's see if we can defeat it with the bumping. Okay, there's the fault set jammed up okay jammed up okay we'll loosen that up again we'll give it a couple more efforts I think if we I think we get the gist of it right we can get a crappy lock man right into that fault set again you guys may or may not be able to see how far over I am and it's jammed up give it another shot I'm gonna go rapid fire on this and there's the fault set again and I'm basically locked up try to get out of it a little bit pin work has successfully there we go right into that deep fault set again guys okay so let's got it I'll show you what I did nothing too uh, heavy duty enough hmm. well, if I could only find the key we'll, we'll open it up okay we'll drop that core Okay. Remove the circlip, which really acts as a secondary because this has a detent. Okay. We'll turn it. We'll get a shim. We'll 
just uh, we have to pull out the content. Okay, we got our shim in there. Okay. There you go. We've got a six pinner. Everything had to be picked. Sorry about the focus issues. Okay, so one. Two, three, and you'll be surprised that's what I used in the final position. It's a minor alterations in position six to turn it into a four pin. I used uh, one of the original drivers and it fit perfectly so now here's the magic okay so position one very heavy steel spring as you can see with a commercial serrated pin position two spool Steel spring in two. Asa. With a nasty Bic lighter spring in position three. That thing tormented me. Position four. We've got that half spool. Could be like an anti bump. Position five, copper spring, and position six, you heard that rocket out of there, commercial serrated with a heavier copper spring. So that combination guys, virtually Eliminated the zipping, the raking, the bumping, and took me to town a little bit as far as the SBPing, right? Same flat key. There we go. You guys can see all that. You see that nasty, nasty Vic lighter spring there. I have some photos for you guys. Glad you stuck around for this project. There's the flat key and a number four pin riding off the tip. Patience, practice, perseverance, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this rebuild on the 8145 that I did in previous video, bringing it back with the same flat key, but some changes that clearly made a difference. Stay well.